What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? I am the Knights of Four. We're bringing back the Mindless Horror Podcast after nearly about a month or two, I would say. Uh, my guest is uh, the returning Eddie Tamant. He was on episode, I believe, 14 or 13. So he's back. How you doing, man? Doing good, man. Thanks for having me back. Oh, yeah, man. Love your content. Been keeping up with your channel and stuff like that. If you guys are not aware, Eddie Tamant has this channel called Eddie Tamant. I highly suggest you go subscribe to his channel because he puts up amazing content. He is one of my Florida people out there to kind of uh, tell me what's going down on the East Coast. So if you want to know what's going down on the East Coast, uh, subscribe to Eddie Tamman, man. He's he's the guy. So Appreciate it. We're going to get started. We have a lot to talk about. Uh, it's been a while since I've done the Mindless Horror Podcast, and I'm so glad to be back. Uh, just been really busy the last couple of weeks. Um, got back to work, uh, been doing other side projects and stuff like that, but it's good to be back, back to my roots. So I want to start the show like we do every show with a couple of shout outs. So I'm going to give us a first shout out to Eddie Tamman just for being on the podcast and doing what he does because, uh, it's not a hard, it's not a easy thing to do, but, uh, when we get the time to do it, we try to produce some of the best content for everyone out there. So we highly, uh, we, we, we really really appreciate all the creators out there and Eddie Tamant, my guest uh, especially him, doing the East Coast stuff, uh, really appreciate that so I get to check out what's going on over there so big shout out to Eddie Tamant. Thank you man, thank you and then I'm going to do a, a big shout out to the uh, the League of Extraordinary Vloggers because those guys have been hitting it hard uh, with their summer of uh, the summer of the League so shout out to those guys man, they keep going every yeah. week, I don't know how they're doing it <laughs> crazy dude they've been putting out so much freaking content when they said it was the the summer of tlev i was like okay right, let's see what they do but they've been putting out so much content they're making me feel bad for not putting out content as much as them yeah man i i, I saw they were putting out so much content and i realized i wasn't putting up as much so i started directing people that way i'm like you know what i'm not gonna put up some stuff right now but uh the league's really doing like three videos a week so go check them out you know so yeah and their live streams, too. Their live streams are pretty cool. They're fun. I got on one recently, and I was messing with them in the common area. Yeah, their live streams are su super fun. Uh, if you want to see one of their live streams, uh, I know for sure next week, next Friday, they're going to be uh, starting their uh, HHN live streams where they watch all the movies and stuff that have to do with the properties at HHN. Uh, they did it last year, and it was really fun. So do it. they're going to do it again this year. Definitely going to have to check that out. I don't know what they're going to watch yet, but I'm really excited to watch it with them. So... Definitely go check those out. Uh, that's going to be fun. Um, before we even get started, too, I want to announce uh, next Saturday I will be at the Warner Brothers Studio Tour. I know Warner Brothers is doing an event this uh, this year for Halloween, so I'm going to try to do a little construction update there. That's going to be pretty cool because I know not, not a lot of YouTubers, or I don't think really anyone in the horror community has been doing construction updates for Warner Brothers, so that would be kind of cool if I'm one of the only ones doing it. Um, but we'll see, I'll see what I can get. I don't know how their layout is for their uh, their back lot. That'll be fun. Also, next Sunday, uh, as of this recording, July 29th, uh, I will be at Midsummer Scream with George, uh, and I think we're gonna meet up with TLEV and all them. But uh, we're gonna hit up some of the panels, see what's going on. Uh, one of the ones I'm really looking forward to uh, is the Halloween Horror Nights panel because not only is our West Coast uh, team gonna be out there, but I hear your guys' East Coast guys gonna be out there too. Yeah, I know, and I'm so jealous, man. So, Mike yeah. Aiello. Yeah, he, uh, I, I'm curious because I'm, I'm assuming the announce if they're going to do an announcement this weekend, it's going to have something to do with both parks, so that should be pretty fun. So look forward to that. Uh, it's going to be fun. We're going to hit a lot of panels and just see what we can do, probably film a couple of videos, hopefully uh, make a video with the league and some other YouTubers that we run into. So, yeah, so let's just get right into it, man. We have, we have some Comic-Con recap. We're gonna first start off with the uh, the Overlord trailer. Did you uh, you check you check that out, right? Definitely, yeah, man. You you put me on some things that I was a little bit out of the loop. So, uh, what are your thoughts, man? I just I want to hear your thoughts because I got a, I got a theory to this movie, but I, I want to hear what you have to say about this trailer before I get into my theory. So, watching it, um, first and foremost, I, I watched it like five times back to back just to like get little details here and there and kind of like see exactly. What's going on? When is this happening? Um, so first and foremost is J.J. Abrams, which I was like, all right, cool. You got you got me hooked. And um, then kind of like following into what was going on, it's like 
they're they're take they're taking um, basically the uh, World War Two and and uh, the whole like Normandy to the next level and kind of like exacerbating the like crazy testing that that they were doing in France. So um, at first, I thought it was just going to be like a cool war movie when I first started watching it, and then it started turning into like a zombie movie. Um, and I'm a huge fan of that, so I, I'm a, I actually got excited, and I, I I was completely unaware of this movie up until like you texted me and told me, hey, this is what we're going to be reviewing, and I gave it a look, and I, now I'm like, oh, nice, there's some nice movies in the horizon. Yeah, um, so I've been following. If you guys listen to the podcast, I've been following. Me and George have been following Overlord for quite a while now, um, and this goes back to our Cloverfield podcast that we've done uh, in the past, but. We have reason to believe that this movie is going to tie into the Cloverfield universe. Um, and, I mean, Paramount came out and said it's not tying into it, but they've lied to us in the past, so I'm just going to I'm just gonna wait till I watch the movie to kind of determine that, uh, that that is true or not. But um, other than that, this, this trailer caught me the minute I heard the bells for Hell's Bells because I'm a huge rock and roll fan. Uh, when I heard ACDC come on, I was like, all right, this song goes so perfect with this movie um it's just insane to see uh you know they're on this plane and it gets shot up just like in world war ii how it was and then yeah they land into france and stuff like that and then you start seeing all these experiments gone wrong uh and it's basically if you're if you're a fan of the call of duty black ops games or any of the call of duty games that had the zombies in them this is basically nazi zombies in a way so I'm really thinking that this movie is going to be really good, honestly, because J.J. Uh, Abrams, not only did he do this, uh, he kind of did this in secret. I, I think they finished filming, like, honestly, in the beginning of the year, about, like, March, April, I think, they finished filming this movie. Uh, he's been in the loop with this movie for a while. It was kind of a secret project, and then at Comic-Con, this was the first of we've ever uh, kind of uh, saw of it. But me and George were following this for a while. We knew we knew the name was Project Overlord, um, and it's that's the title of the movie. So I think it's an interesting title. For me though, it's got like a I don't know if you've ever uh, or if you ever seen it, but there's this game called Wolfenstein, and just the the kind of overall font and stuff, and like the the look is like that meets Call of Duty Black Ops Zombies. I'm a huge gamer as well, so this is what I'm kind of seeing through that uh, trailer. You know what I mean? Yeah, and I, I love the zombie game. And now that you say that. I, I could definitely see the connection, but I got to say when when uh when I first was pulling it up, it didn't have an image or a thumbnail to the video. So as soon as the the trailer started, I'm like, I'm like, what are we reviewing on the horror podcast today? <laughs> this doesn't seem horror at all. And then it completely flipped on me. <laughs> yeah, because it starts off like you think it's just going to be a normal World War II movie, and then it just goes out of the ordinary, out of nowhere. So. I'm really looking forward to that, honestly, because I hope uh, Abrams. And the, honestly, I'm not gonna lie, uh, I, Abrams is is a hit or miss with me. I don't like his take on Star Trek too much, but that's because I'm not really a Star Trek fan, and I didn't really like the way he did uh, the Star Wars movies. But I do like his own original idea movies, where like he did Cloverfield and everything. His monster movies are awesome, so I have really high faith for this one because it looks like it's another original movie and stuff, and I think I'm gonna enjoy it. Yeah. No, definitely. I, I'm a, a little bit on the opposing end with you there. I, I like the, I liked all his movies to be honest with you so far, at least all the mainstream ones. Um, and, and Cloverfield was one of my my favorites. It was one of those that caught me off off guard. Um, but yeah, I, I'm I'm looking forward to this one. Yeah, it should be really good. So, uh, moving on from Overlord. So we're gonna obviously, uh, if I'm gonna keep trying to keep this podcast going again, but. Um, I'll keep you guys updated with the news I get from Overlord uh, when something comes out, maybe some new theories and stuff. But yeah, my ultimate theory is this is part of the Cloverfield universe. Uh, maybe this is like the early stages of them experimenting with monsters and stuff like that, and that's why they look the way they look because they didn't look fully zombified. It looked like uh, they were like kind of smart zombies. They could still talk and stuff like that. So um, until I see this movie, I, I still think this is part of the Cloverfield universe, even though Paramount said it's not. I'm just going to go with my theory so far. So moving on from Overlord, uh, something that caught my attention also this week was the Walking Dead Season 9 trailer. Now, a lot of people stop watching this show. Well, first, before I say any, before I go any further, you wa- do you watch the show or not, Eddie? Yeah, I'm caught up. Okay, so you've, been, you've watched the last season. You know what's been going on. You know who, all the main characters who've died off and everything. 
Yeah, yeah, okay. I'm all caught up. Okay, yep. cool. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, this is going to be full on spoilers for Season 8 uh, and Season 7 and 6, I believe. Um, but, you know, a lot of people started stopped watching the show when uh, Glenn got killed off and Abraham. Uh, viewership went down a little bit. Um, and that was around the same time when Negan came in the picture, which he's honestly the, still the reason why I watched the show, because I love Negan. Um, and then it went down a little bit more when they killed off Carl. Uh, that was, uh, that was kind of a big hit for me because if you read the comics, you know, Carl's one of the last people to actually live out of the group. So that was kind of a interesting take on that. Um, and so I heard this season, well, this is a for sure thing because Andrew Lincoln said it at the panel, but, um, this is going to be Andrew Lincoln and Lauren Cohen's last season of The Walking Dead. Yep. Maggie and, and, uh, Rick are both gone. And from what I understand, they're leaving mid-season. Wow! So mid-season finale, they're both going to die off. Wow. So the they weren't they didn't say that they were going to die, but they're definitely not going to be there for the other half of the season. Apparently, that that's my understanding. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know that. That's news to me. Then uh, I thought they were going to be full season. My whole thing was uh, maybe one of them's going to die mid-season, then one of them's going to die at the end of the season. Um, the trailer for Comic Con showed a lot of promising things. We started seeing a little bit of the feud in between how they're not they're trying to work things out with the saviors and everything, but it's still too awkward for everyone because they went to war with them and stuff like that. But we're starting to see like uh you know, you had the rope and now they're pulling on the rope and now stuff is like starting to escalate and yeah. stuff like that. And so you're seeing Rick trying to put everybody together and he's he's like just trying to make sure everybody's you know doing their part and stuff but at the same time everyone still can't get along with each other because they like i said there's still that that tension there where it's just like okay you guys try to kill me like a couple days ago and you want me to work with you like that's not going to happen so um i really think that this season's going to be an interesting season compared to uh last season because last season i will admit it was pretty slow it was a good season but it was a little slow at some parts but i think this season's going to be pretty interesting to see how they uh play out the uh leaving of uh andrew lincoln and lauren cohen so that should be pretty uh interesting so let me tell you like a, a little theory i have about why the walking dead has been falling off and you tell me what you think so um i don't know if you noticed but the last two seasons uh daryl's kind of like taking a back seat they haven't really given his storyline too much attention and he was almost unnoticeable in last season aside from the fact that he was in the picture but he wasn't doing much and if you remember when the show first started there was a huge fan base of people saying if daryl dies we riot and i i honestly think that without being the lead he was the glue yeah i i will definitely agree with that and it's funny that you bring up that if daryl dies we riot because they made t-shirts out of that it was a big campaign and stuff like that uh, around season three, season four, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, I was I I've been reading that when they when Lauren Cohen and uh, Andrew Lincoln leave, he's going to be taking up the lead role. They offered him a, a bigger contract with more money to take up the lead role for the show. Exactly, and that's what I heard too. But I I have a hard time be believing that that's going to work now, given that they they ignored his character so much this past season. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah, because, you know, he had a couple of badass moments, but I don't know. It, it feels like to me he's not as badass as he used to be. You know what I mean? Like, he used to yeah. be, honestly, like every season prior to when Negan came on, he was, like, doing something badass. And the last badass thing he did, in my opinion, was when he shot those people with the rocket launcher. And that was that was the badass. That was the last badass thing I remember him doing. Exactly. Yeah, he's he's like falling off, and I I don't think it's his fault because I think his character is still badass. They just haven't given him that those moments to shine any longer. And as I say this, I'm looking at my I have a Daryl bobblehead and a Daryl keychain that's still in its box, and I'm I'm hoping that they don't look at me sideways as I say this. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, but you know I'm I'm hoping this season they 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 start building up his character to be towards more of a leader now because. In the past, we've seen that he works better solo. Yeah. Um, so I'm hoping that they, they really push his character this season to be more of a leader 
guy, you know. And I I don't know if it will work. Hopefully it works, but I've always seen him as like the badass solo guy where he when he goes out solo and he just does his own shit and he for some reason finds a way to survive it. So Exactly, yeah. And I took some notes while watching this as well cuz last season I almost fell off, but I decided to keep going. So this season I I will be giving it a shot and seeing where it takes me. But I wasn't uh, I, I feel like you got a, a positive uh, of you from the from the trailer. I, I'm not too sure of it. And I took a couple notes down. Um, yeah, I just feel I don't know, man. I, I like I said, I, I, I'm literally only really watching the show now because of Negan. Um, I love I love Jeffrey Dean Morgan for one. He's a fantastic actor. And he just for some reason for me brings that character to life. Um, I love how cocky he is and all that and stuff. So I'm really curious to see where Negan's going to go this season as well because in the trailer, we don't see his face too much. All we see him is in the dark and, uh, you know, Rick's talking to him and stuff like that, saying that we're making it without you, we have a better way and stuff like that. And one of the most badass lines he delivers in this trailer was, uh, when everything comes and falls to shit, you come to me and tell me that and stuff like that. And I was just like, fuck, dude. Even yeah. though Negan's held prisoner, he's still a badass, you know? Yeah, I, I really liked his character, too. And I honestly s- started to feel like he was actually the good guy. Yeah, I get you. Because he started falling down, and now everything's falling apart in front of Rick. It looked like in this trailer. And now it's just like, well, maybe Negan might be able to fix it, you know? And, you know, if if you really go back to the central, like, issue as to how it started the people of alexandria actually started everything and yeah. negan yeah. gave several opportunities to because he thought you know humans are a tool that could continue to be utilized instead of killing them so like he actually gives an opportunity not to kill like he always needs to send his message by killing one or two but he sees the value in groups and he gave them the, their opportunities to kind of redeem themselves and I mean, he did it in a gangster way that makes him villainized. But I think, to some degree, he was right. No, I completely agree with you because a lot of people are like, that was unnecessary for them to kill Glenn and stuff like that. He gave him chance after chance after chance, but Rick's group just kept killing all the saviors. Um, yeah. And at one point, they even were pretty chill about it. They asked nicely and stuff like that to join them. And chance after chance, they just kept killing their people. So. Eventually, when it came down to it at that, I think, like, season, the season six finale, um, when Rick and the group are constantly driving and there's roadblocks as they keep going and stuff, and you see Simon, and he's trying to talk to them and stuff like that, and then it it ultimately comes down with them being surrounded in the woods by all the saviors and stuff like that, so I just feel that, yeah, Rick had had an opportunity to join the saviors, and it could have went a whole different route, but he just wanted to continue being that leader that he's always been in the show and so now that went down a different route than what they could have went through you know so i mean for all we know if they would have went down the road the route of the saviors glenn could still been alive uh abraham still would have been alive uh carl probably would have still been alive too you know that like oh yeah carl definitely would have been alive um and i think abraham and i think abraham had to go Somebody had to go to introduce Negan, but it didn't have to be um, Glenn. Yeah. I mean, I know uh, if you're a fan like me, I I read the comics and stuff, and that's exactly how it happens in the comics. You know, they take Glenn and – I don't remember – I don't – I didn't read, but I've read that part where they – I know Glenn dies for sure. I don't know about Abraham though. Um, But – a lot of people don't know this, and it's funny, though, because uh, going back to Daryl, Daryl's not even in the comics. You know, Daryl, they literally just made up for the show, so they have the freedom to do whatever they want with that character as to uh, make the tough decisions and stuff. If they want to kill him off, they're more than welcome to do it. If they want to keep him going, they want to make him a leader, they have the freedom to do whatever they want with that character. So I have, I have a feeling going full circle um, that maybe it's time we see Daryl start stepping up because at the end of this last season – when Maggie is talking to – who was it? She was talking to uh, Daryl. Uh, was she talking to uh... – She was talking to Daryl, Jesus, and, and – What's her uh, name? Michonne, right? 
No, I don't think Michonne. There's no way because they were talking about working against Michonne and and uh, and Rick. Um, it was Daryl Negan. I mean, sorry, Daryl <laughs> Jesus. And I think there was one other person. Oh, was it um, was it was it Carl's like love interest? Yeah, because she's been working with Maggie. That's right. I was surprised to see Daryl when he stepped out of the shadows because I was like, oh, shit, Daryl really feels that way, huh? He's finally speaking yeah, that's, his mind. That's Rick's right-hand man. Yeah, throughout the entire series, he's been Rick's right-hand man. So um, I'm curious to see how this is going to play. We kind of saw a little tease of that uh, in the trailer, too, for Season 9 where, um, you know, Daryl goes, you know, we're still a team and all of that. And then Rick questions that. He goes, well, are we? And stuff like that. Yeah. So there's going to be some stuff that escalates to that moment of maybe Maggie and Daryl are slowly coming under and trying to take over. But then Rick's going to start seeing, realizing, like, fuck, they're trying to overthrow me. I got to do something about this. Yeah. And, and to that point, um, another note that I made while I was watching the trailer was, and it's a simple note, but I think it, it puts the point across, is the show was better when they were surviving zombie issues instead of interhuman issues and conflicts. Yeah. Yeah, I get you. Um, I still, hands down, think season season three is my favorite because when they went to the prison, I just thought it was awesome. Oh yeah, um, I love the guy. I think he, honestly, I, I love Negan, but he Negan didn't have the uh, Negan took over the show and was too great for his own good. I thought the governor complimented Rick. Yeah. So uh, I, I I I would love to see the uh, Negan versus the Governor if the Governor is still alive today, man. That'd be so cool. Yeah, that'd be a really good fight. Um, uh, one of the things that I'm really surprised of this uh, season, and I think I know how they're gonna do it. Um, if if Andrew Lincoln is supposed to be leaving, or if he's gonna die off, or I don't know what they're gonna do with this character. But uh, what is it? John Berthall is coming back to reprise his role as Shane this season. Um, so for some flashbacks, right? Uh, so I think either it's going to be flashbacks or hallucinations or or something, you know? Because I think, like, in order for Shane to come back, that's the only two ways I can think of. Uh, yeah. I'm going to go more on the line of hallucinations, though. Gotcha. I mean, it and, makes the most sense out of all of it, you know what I mean? Yeah, but, I mean, I, just thinking about that now, It'll be interesting how they do it, but he that character literally has connections to nobody but Rick. Yeah. Um, Which is a because everybody who else we had a connection with is dead. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Uh, <laughs> I think the there's only a couple original members left. It was Daryl, uh, Rick, uh, Daryl, Rick, Matt, not even Maggie. No, just Daryl, Rick, and um, what's her name? Michelle. Not Michonne, the, uh... Oh, uh... Carol. Carol. They're, like, the three only originals from season one that are the original members that are still yeah. around. So, oh, we're, just, we're cutting low and low on original members, you know, so... Yeah. But, um, one other thing that's been, like, pissing me off for, like, the past, like, two to three seasons, I, I, I forget when we first saw it. But who the hell are these helicopter people, and when the hell do we find out who's freaking driving these helicopters? Yeah, they keep teasing it, huh? You see it every now and then, they just keep teasing it, but we don't know who it is. Yeah, and it was in the trailer, uh, and I feel like the past like two to three seasons, we've had like one episode with a helicopter either flying by, or they heard one in the distance, or they just saw one. You know what? I think, um, so... I know in the comics they introduce a new group. I don't remember what who they're called or what they're called. Um, but uh, there's a new group that gets introduced in, and that should be interesting. I think they're slowly setting it up because when they do a big reveal, it's going to be a new, um, a new group. And mm -hmm. I don't know if it's going to be the group that we saw in the trailer because we did get some intro. Uh, we get we got some introductions of some new characters that are going to be coming on the show. One of which is uh, I forget his name, but he's in he's he's in uh, he's in Fanboys and he's in the uh, Fantastic Beast movie, um, and I forget his name, but he's such a good actor. Um, oh, I know who you're talking about. He's you're talking about the like the chubby guy from Fantastic Beasts. Yeah, 
the yeah. the friend. Yeah, he uh, he's gonna be a, a regular this season. So I'm really excited for that because he's such a good actor, um, and I'm curious to see what his role's gonna be because uh, from what I've seen, looks like he's gonna be uh, another su- uh, survivor, and looks like this group been through a lot because they look like they're telling some stories and stuff like that. So yeah, we'll see what when, happens. When you when you say they're introducing them slowly, I, I mean. That it's like slug slow because that helicopter has like popped up like one episode every season for like the past two or three seasons, and um, every time I see it r- randomly, I remember I'm like I'm like damn yeah that we saw that in one episode like last season. Who the hell are these people? Yeah, it just <laughs> keeps coming out of nowhere. So. Hopefully, we'll see it this season. Maybe they're gonna wait till the end of this season to reveal it. Um, the next big villain, uh, hopefully, because Negan did his two seasons. I think he's slowly winding down as a villain. Uh, maybe he's got li- maybe a couple more villainous uh, schemes up his sleeve, but we'll see. It looks like right now he's kind of accepted the. the he, I can't talk. He's accepted the defeat, so let's see what happens from there. Yeah. Um. So that was a good little Walking Dead talk. Uh. I'm glad I have someone to actually talk about that with because a lot of my friends, a lot of my family have stopped watching it because they just got pissed off with the show or fed up. So it's good to talk to someone that still watches the show and still kind of has the faith in it to maybe hopefully the next season will be better and stuff like that. Yeah, I try. <laughs> yeah, I get you, man. Uh, next thing we're going to talk about, uh, this one was uh, an amazing surprise. Uh, the next installment of the Kaiju universe, Godzilla, King of Monsters. Not sure if you watched this trailer or not. Of course, man. You asked me to. Of course uh, I did. So, <laughs> such, such, I'm so looking forward to this. I just, I can't wait. So, I, once again, I'm on an opposite field here with you, but... And I'll give you specific reasons why. So I watched it in preparation for the podcast. I said, I want to make sure that we have good conversations about everything that that we're going to talk about. I watched it. I'm a huge fan of Godzilla. I love the, like, what was it, like Godzilla 2000, even though people hate it. I loved it. That's my my least favorite one. Yeah, I I loved it. And I've always just, to me, like Godzilla could do no wrong type of thing. But watching the trailer... Something that stuck out to me like a damn sore thumb was there was a bunch of notable actors playing characters within this movie that were so typecasted that I felt like I was watching the show that I knew them from. Um, and I explained even further. So, for example, Eleven's in the in the in the trailer. Millie she Bobby seemed, Brown. Yep, she's going to be one of the main characters I think in this movie. I believe. Yeah, it, she seemed like Eleven. It almost seemed like a Stranger Things uh, <laughs> trailer. Um, and then, uh, what's his name from, uh, from Silicon Valley, the main character from Silicon Valley was in it and he was playing like a computer nerd. Um, on top of that, Tywin Lannister from Game of Thrones is in it. And he says like a line that would sound like Game of Thrones. He says like something like the King is here or something like that. All hell to the King. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, what the hell are these guys are? They literally picked them from shows and are now making them like typecasted so that they're playing a role within this movie that seems exactly like the show that they came from. Uh, one of the ones that kind of caught my attention was uh, Shea Jackson Jr., Ice Cube's son. Yes, him uh, too. Yeah, he, He's just playing a soldier, and I'm just like, okay, you better have some good meaning to this movie. And on top of that, he's playing a soldier, which makes him kind of like gangster, you know? So, yeah. You know, the what's it called? Uh, straight out of Compton, so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So, but I think I really am looking forward to this movie, not because of the cast, but because of the monster lineup they have in store for us. Should be so good, man. So we got, we got, of course, Godzilla, um, and a lot of pro- a lot of people's problems with Godzilla this time around uh, in these new ones is he's, he's looking pretty fat, you know. Um, but it's more true to the original Godzilla, isn't it? Original God, even J- even Japan complained about how fat he was oh really let's okay. just say that uh japan hated this movie hated the 2014 remake so much they went out and made their own movie called shin godzilla which was a piece of shit it was bad yeah. i don't suggest it 
So, um, this time around, I'm liking the storyline because not only are we gotten Godzilla already, but we got Kong Skull Island, which is going to eventually lead up. The next movie after this one is Godzilla vs. King Kong, um, which is going to be awesome, I think. Hopefully it leads to a, a ride at Universal. Yeah, or, you know, let's... You know, let's change out the. Uh, actually, no, because uh, who's taking over? Warner Brothers is taking over, so they got the rights for Kong. Uh, so it's a whole Warner Brothers universe kind of thing, which I I would I wish they would do something at Universal, but yeah, Warner Brothers has all the rights to this, and they they leased out the rights for Kong and stuff like that. So that was pretty cool. But in this trailer, not only did we see Godzilla, we saw Rodan. We saw Mothra, and we saw King Ghidorah. Now, King Ghidorah is the one I was looking forward to the most, man. A three-headed dragon is, honestly, in my book, the greatest thing ever. Yeah, he looked pretty badass. It was like his silhouette. You don't get, like, a clear picture of him. It, it was a cool silhouette within, like, a cloud of smoke type of thing. Yeah, there's one scene where they show him, like, sitting on top of a, of a, of a volcano and stuff, and I'm just like, what the hell, man? He's just sitting up there like it's nothing. That's a hot tub for him. Yeah, no, the the trailer definitely had its moments where where I was like, oh, this this is gonna be pretty cool. And like I told you, Godzilla could do no wrong. I'll, I'll watch it even if it's bad. Um, but it, I, I couldn't help but see those those characters as who they were before. <laughs> yeah, um, I think because Eleven, she's only been in really Stranger Things. I I don't recall her being in anything else. Uh, that was probably her debut project and her biggest uh, break right there. So a lot of people are obviously going to see her as Eleven. Um, and that's kind of hard when you have these child actors that kind of do stuff like that. And, you know, they're doing it. They're already going on the third season of this show. And it, it's got such a huge fan base that not only do people know who these actors are, but they only recognize them as the characters they play. So it's just like, you know, you see – that was the whole thing with me for it, you know. the The kid who played Richie was the kid from Stranger Things, and I was just like, okay, he's kind of playing the same character, but he cusses a little bit more, you know. And it's like, yeah. I, I I understand where you're coming from with the Godzilla with Millie Bobby Brown coming in, pretty much playing her her character as well. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, the the Godzilla that that I was saying that I I loved was not the 2014 one. I'm googling as. As I say it, it's uh, the 1998 one. Yeah, the one with Matthew Broderick, right? Yeah. Yeah, the one where he's in New York. I will say, though, there's one cool scene in there where they're walking through the tunnel, and you think it's a wall, then he opens his eye, and then he just bursts out. I'm just like, oh, that's pretty scary. Yeah, I like that one a lot. I, I like that uh, depiction of, uh, of Godzilla. It's, it was different than the the, tra the traditional Godzilla look, and I, I just like that one. And I've always been a fan of Iguanas, too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my dad is a huge Godzilla fan. Like I think every every usually every holiday, uh, we have this channel called the L Ray Network. It's um, I guess it's the channel that uh, what's his name? Robert Rodriguez. That's his channel. So they always do a uh, classic um, movie marathon, some action, sci-fi, and all that. But they do a they do a thing on I think New Year's and a couple other times of the year called Kaiju Weekend, where it's just nothing but the original Godzilla movies, um, and they play them back to back to back and stuff like that. So it's really cool to sit down and watch those movies. My dad is a huge fan of Godzilla. He loves anything with big monsters and stuff. So if it's even if it's the cheesiest movie, my dad will sit through and watch it because it has a giant monster in it. So. Um, but I am really looking forward to this movie because, uh, like I said. Uh, the first one was made up characters, you know, the, the villains that he fought. Those were never in the Godzilla universe until that movie. So that was, uh, I, I, I will say, though, they were still cool characters. But I, I do like the original characters that we're getting now. Rodan, uh, Mothra, and my, my all-time favorite uh, character, King Ghidorah. So I'm hoping after they do Kong versus Godzilla that they maybe reboot. Uh, I'm hoping uh, one of my other favorites is uh, Godzilla versus Mecha Godzilla. So that would be pretty cool. Yeah, we'll see. I mean, I, I look forward to this one coming out, though. Yeah, this is going to be a good one. Uh, this comes out, I want to say, what was it, March of next year or May of next year or something like that? Yeah. So we got some time till it comes out, but uh, that means more room for some trailers. I can't wait to see that trailer when I go see uh Hopefully the next movie comes out. I think is, the next big one is Mission Impossible, so hopefully they play it through Mission Impossible. 
When's Mission Impossible coming out? Is it this coming weekend? Yeah, this coming Friday. So that should be that looks pretty good. I really want to see that. Yeah, the, that's been a good series. Yeah. Um. So New Line, uh, they do this thing. This is the second annual. They call it Scare Diego. Uh, it's the panel where they release all the new horror movies coming up. Uh, what they got in the works. What's coming out pretty soon. Uh, this year's Scare Diego, Scare Diego uh, panel really focused on The Nun, which comes out in like two more months, I believe. Uh, they're making a new uh, La Llorona movie, which sounds uh, pretty interesting. Um, I've always been interested in her tale, so if New Line's doing it, and it's um, it, it's got it's ought to be good because they've done the Conjuring universe, they've done it, they've done so much amazing scary movies that I'm just I'm not even sweating it. I know it's probably going to be a pretty good scary movie. Uh, and then they showed some B-roll footage of uh, It Chapter 2, mostly behind the scenes, because they literally just started filming that last month, so they're still in the filming process of it. But uh, I've read uh, what they showed in the It Chapter 2 um, uh, footage, and all it really was was uh, Bill Hader's character uh, walks in, says, what's up, losers, and it shows all of them at the Chinese restaurant. If you guys are familiar with the original It, they all meet up and have dinner and you know, because they're all coming back together to try to defeat Pennywise again. But they end up having a good time until Pennywise actually crashes the party and scares the shit out of all of them. So um, they showed that. They showed the kids. They're going to be returning. And like I said, if you're not familiar with the original, um, they do have flashbacks of them as kids. So uh, the kids will be returning uh, in this chapter two. And they showed some footage of Bill Skarsgård back in the Pennywise outfit. So that was pretty cool to see. Um, or not, we didn't get to see it, but... Just reading it sounded cool, so I heard uh, Pennywise this time around is pretty sadistic and stuff like that, so I'm very much looking forward to seeing what he looks like. Yeah. Um, I, I So I, I tried to look up some of this stuff, and I, I couldn't find too much of it, but it, it sounds like you, you said you read a lot of this stuff, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I mostly read the It Chapter 2 stuff. Uh, that's the most I've I've really heard this weekend. I don't know if they showed – they may have showed a scene from The Nun – um, but they, they didn't ever, they don't release it online. Um, I don't know if they, the, I mean, the only thing of the nun we've gotten so far is a trailer, but they may have probably showed a scene since it's like two months away. They could have just previewed a little scene. Uh, and the La Llorona movie, um, I'm not sure if they showed anything, but I know the cast and crew came out and announced it, that they are making this movie. Uh, and that should be pretty cool. So, I'm, I'm, other than that, the only thing that I really read was the It Chapter 2 kind of stole the whole show when they showed the footage and stuff like that behind the scenes, so. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I I, I wouldn't take it any other way, uh, given the, the presence of It and how well it did. But, um, man, that, that Nun trailer I thought was pretty damn spot on. That was awesome. That was such a good trailer. I am, I, you know, for one... I love the Conjuring universe. I will be honest, though. I've not watched uh, Annabelle Creation to its entirety. I've watched only half of it. But the half I did watch, I was really getting into it. So I want to finish that pretty soon. But as far as everything else, I've watched everything else. Um, if we're on the subject of the Conjuring universe, they just announced that Annabelle 3 will be coming out next year. And it's supposed to introduce uh, more of the... Uh, um, Warren, the Warren uh, family's uh, museum. You know how in uh, the Conjuring movies we go in uh, Ed and Lorraine Warren's house and they have that whole kind of paranormal uh, collection and stuff. They're supposed to introduce a lot more of uh, how those stuff and what they are, you know, how a lot of that stuff got there and what they do and stuff like that in this next Annabelle movie. So that should be pretty interesting. Yeah, and I, I want to go to that to that um, the museum. It's actually, I think it's in, in New England. Um, so it's not too far off from me. One day I might do a, a drive up that way. Is it in their house or did they run out a spot or did they buy out a, a spot and they put their whole collection in that spot? Well, I think now it's like at, at like a, like a retail location or, but like in like an old little town. Okay. Um, but I think originally it was in their house. Yeah. I think the only one that's still alive is Lorraine Warren. I don't know if she... I think she's still alive. I think she's the only one that's still alive. So she may, she may actually make some appearances there, and probably you know you can ask her a couple questions. I mean, they can make these movies for a very long time, the Conjury universe, because I mean, as far as like the Nun and 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 Annabelle go, I mean, those are just kind of spinoff movies. I'm I'm pretty sure the first, you know, the the Nun movie, 
the first nun is going to be how she became the demon. Obviously, you're going to see uh, what drove that storyline to come into The Conjuring. And, uh, and with the first Annabelle, I'm pretty sure that was based maybe on a true story. But after, I think after, like, when they make sequels and stuff, um, except for The Conjuring, when they make sequels to, like, Annabelle and stuff, I think they just make those um, just to, you know, for a good horror movie. Uh, they may be inspired by true events or just, uh, you know, the doll itself is, since it's been, it's got a history, maybe it's, you know... Um, they maybe take the tail, but they made it twisted even more, you know, and stuff like that. But uh, for sure, I think those Conjuring movies are, are legit stories of their cases because they have so many cases that they've done over the years that they can continue doing those movies for years on. So I would love to see more of the Conjuring movies come out about Ed and Lorraine uh, Warren's cases because they have such interesting uh, cases that they've done. And uh, honestly, they make not only for good horror movies, but for good storytelling, you know what I mean? Yeah, definitely, and I love the the characters that they got to portray, Ed and Lorraine. Yeah, the two, those two are uh, fantastic, uh, a fantastic actor, fantastic actress. Um, of course, and, uh, oh, go ahead. Uh, apparently, for the nun, they actually got her sister to play um, the that the young girl that you see walking down the hall is actually her her younger sister. So, I, I think they might have got her because that's they're they're gonna make it look like that's lorraine's like blood lineage from way back when probably like her grandma or something you know that'd be that, that's cool that they do that because uh i think her and her sister have been on an american horror story oh interesting i i didn't know that i, I know that i know that's random to just throw out there but i i know for sure her sister was on american horror story and if I'm correct, I think she's been on American Horror Story too. She looks like she may – I may be wrong about that, but I know for sure her sister was. Her sister was on the first season and the third season. I know for sure. I don't know about any other season though. Yeah, and her name escapes me right now. Yeah, I forget I forget their names. But uh, yeah, I'm, I, I, I knew she looked familiar and I knew that I knew that uh, – I knew they were related of some sort. I knew they were trying to go down that route. I think I read a theory about how they're going to try to do that because they want to um, ultimately, yeah, reveal that bloodline and stuff like that. So that should be pretty cool. Um, very much looking forward to The Nun, though. That comes out, I think, in September, right? Yeah, September. So that's that's like literally a month away. So I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that. That should be pretty good. That trailer yep. was, was just uh, – it was, it was scary. It was good. Uh, give me the creeps and stuff like that. Just in the beginning shot where they just show the portrait of the nun, you just feel like, oh shit, this is pretty scary. Yeah, and it, this is obviously probably wishful thinking, but it comes out at the perfect time to be amazed at a certain event. Yeah, it does. Um, <laughs> and that was supposed to be amazed last year, The Conjuring, at least at our event. I don't know about your guys' event, but... They had to scrap it last minute because they couldn't get the rights or something like that. So they, we got uh, Titans of Terror Maze. Yeah, there's like legal battles behind the scenes that I've heard about. Um, but yeah, that, that would be awesome if one day we got it. Although, I, I, you know, since it's Warner Brothers, I don't think we ever will. Since they're starting to do their own event over here in Hollywood. It would be uh, a dream come true if it came to Horror Nights because a lot of people want that and it to come to Horror Nights. But since Warner Brothers is starting their own event... I don't think we'll see it anytime soon because with all the movies they have coming out, they can literally do those mazes for as long as, you know, as long as it goes. Because uh, so far for the Warner Brothers event, we've only gotten the It maze uh, announced and they're going to do a Joker Arkham Asylum maze with all the famous uh, Batman villains, which I am super looking forward to because I am a diehard Batman fan. Um, yeah. That should be cool. So. I know uh, Sunday at Midsummer Scream they're gonna have a panel, and I'm definitely gonna attend that. To uh, I'll probably film it and stuff like that. But um, they're gonna they're supposed to be announcing. I think I don't know if they're gonna announce everything, but they're gonna announce some stuff uh, regarding the event. So I'm hoping some Conjuring, maybe some uh, maybe some of the Nun. I don't know something Conjuring uh, universe. Uh, you know, a bit of a tangent, but the 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 fact that Warner Brothers is kind of like getting in the game now is awesome but there's no Warner Brothers presence in Orlando so they could always double up and let Universal do it in Orlando get money on the East Coast as well as the West Coast yeah um, what's funny to me too is if you go to Universal Studios here in Hollywood if you literally look right down the hill when you're going uh, we have giant escalators that go down we have a lower lot and an upper lot if you go down to the lower lot there's these giant escalators if you literally look right down the hill Warner Brothers is literally right down the hill from Universal Studios 
So right. literally competitions right down the street from them, and that's kind of funny to me. But uh, I for sure will be attending both of those events this year. I'm not too sure about Not Scary Farm yet or uh, the Queen Mary, but for sure I'm, I'm going to be attending those two events this year because uh, – Warner Brothers already sold me with the DC stuff, man. I, I am a diehard DC fan, and um, if they're going to make a Joker maze with all the greatest Batman villains, I'm already in. You already sold me at that maze, dude. I don't even care about it. You already sold me at a Joker maze, so. Yeah, all their early promotion looks. Yeah, so you got the you got the clown princes uh, of crime advertising the event, which is really cool. Um, let's move on to the Universal panel, man, because they had the glass trailer, and they showed some... I heard some really good Halloween footage, but fortunately we're not going to get to see that footage, but still good to talk about. I've read a description about it, but uh, let's talk about that glass trailer, man. What'd you think? So um, I'm a huge fan of Split, and for a second there I thought that they were going to like try to typecast um, James McAvoy, and then I noticed that, no, that is the actual character from Split. It looks great. Long story short, it looks great, but I am a diehard hater of M. Night Shyamalan, aside from the specific movies that he's done great with. Aside from that, I've always been like, this guy's garbage, but, um, you know, he, he does have a couple hits. Like, he's like a hit, or he will miss completely. Like, this guy could shoot at the ground and miss, type of, type of miss. Uh, but this looks awesome, and I can't wait to watch it. And I'm, I, I kind of like hate myself for loving it so much just because I don't like M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> uh, yeah, Signs was not a good movie. Uh, he did that movie. Uh, I just thought it was a stupid concept. If you're going to be an alien and you guys, you guys, your one weakness is water, and you come to a planet that's 75% water, that's just that's horrible. Uh, at least in my thought of you know my thought process. But uh, he's got some really good movies. Uh, if you've seen Unbreakable, that's what this movie is supposed to be a sequel of, um, as well as a sequel to Split, so it's a double sequel in a way. Um, Unbreakable is a fantastic movie. If you've not seen Unbreakable, I highly suggest you watch that before you watch Glass because uh, that's definitely a big benefactor for this movie. Um, that and, of course, Split. Yeah, I haven't seen Unbreakable, but he did great with uh, The Sixth Sense, too, and unfortunately yeah. he does Sense have, was good i like that yeah he has some some big dogs under his belt but then he has things like the happening and lady in the water that to me were just terrible attempts at anything and uh, a lot of his movies i feel like he, when people when he's casting his his uh his actors like he'll have mark Wahlberg come in and say like all right go ahead give me the lines and then mark Wahlberg gives him the lines and he's like that was horrible but i want it worse <laughs> 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 yeah, happening wasn't good. Uh, but here's what I always – because that's a Stephen King book. So um, I always say, yeah, it sounds good on paper, but when you turn it into a screenplay, it's a whole different process. you know. And it's like, yeah, The Happening is a good book, but I don't think it's meant to be a movie. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like you can write something on a book, but you can't – it's hard to turn it into a movie usually most of the time. So. But this glass trailer, man, it it was cool because we got to see, um, we got to see a little bit of everybody. Bruce Willis. We got to see Samuel Jackson, James McAvoy. We got confirmation that the uh, the chick from Split is returning um, to reprise her role. Uh, maybe to maybe because the Beast is still has affectionate with her or something like that. I don't know. Maybe he's maybe that's the only woman in the in the in the world that can probably calm down. Uh, that character i don't know because uh in the movie he didn't kill her but i think did he did that to escape? send a message right did she escape yeah she is she's a, she escapes but like we see one point where like he shoots a shotgun at him and he can help uh, with withstand that and he like bends bars and stuff like that and so it's gonna be a good fight because bruce willis's character if you watch unbreakable he's super strong and stuff like that and i think it's it's gonna be a good fight between bruce willis and james mcavoy because you're gonna have two strong guys going at it and then mr glass is kind of gonna be like the guy in the chair kind of telling james mcavoy's character what to do and stuff like that he's gonna be like the ultimate brand of the operation you know what i mean yeah no the the movie seems so damn interesting um and even when watching like split 
James McAvoy. I mean, he's a great actor, but the character, the, the whole entire movie, I thought he was just a crazy character. But the concept that like his his craziness, he turned it into reality just by thinking it so much. That was kind of like the idea from like the psychiatrist. Um, that that kind of like blew my mind. And now that they're putting it into another movie, kind of taking that same idea because they're talking to like a psychiatrist again. And the psychiatrist is basically doing some some research on that particular type of issue. People kind of thinking that there's something and maybe like becoming it. I, I just love that concept. Yeah, it's really cool. There's that one scene where they show them all three of them just sitting in the chairs and stuff. And I thought that was a cool shot because you get to see. Uh, I don't I want to know how Bruce Willis got uh, admitted to the, the psychiatric hospital. Maybe the, he, they catch him and they think he's crazy because. He said he's trying to help somebody. I don't know. I'm hoping they. Uh, I, I'm thinking they're gonna obviously explain that in the movie. But uh, I can see. I know why. Uh, I'm not gonna spoil it for you, but I know why Mr. Glass is there, and I know, of course, why James McAvoy's character is there. Um, when you watch Unbreakable, they they you'll you'll see why Glass is there and stuff like that. So. Um, but yeah, it, it's gonna be a, a fucking really good movie because this is M Night Shyamalan's. Uh, version of a superhero universe um but it's also mixed with some horror you know what i mean yeah so definitely not. that's what i like about it yeah no i i don't i don't know much about the other movie but that, now i definitely gotta watch it no it's it's a really good movie um the kid from the sixth sense is in there he plays bruce willis's son um of course you got samuel L. jackson's in there and of, of course bruce willis is in there but uh, when you find out how he got his powers and, you know, the whole story between, between him and Mr. Glass, it's, it's just such a good story. So highly suggest you watch that because it's, it's a fantastic watch. Um, I watched Split, and then at the end of Split, you see Bruce Willis' character come out, and it's the same character from Unbreakable. And I was shocked by that because I had never seen Unbreakable, but my dad was telling me all about it. And I was like, oh, they're starting a universe. Now i got to watch Unbreakable. So like that, that weekend, I went home and watched Unbreakable, and it was just its such a good watch. So highly suggest Unbreakable. Um, that's a very good movie, and this is going to be the third installment to that uh, to that series. So should be good. And um, I heard that this time around, we're going to see double the personalities that James McAvoy has. I think in the first movie, he had something like uh, – at least uh, shown on screen, I think it was like 12 personalities he did. And this one, M. Night Shyamalan, he was on Conan, and he said I think he has somewhere like 20-something, like 22 or 23 different personalities we're going to see on screen. So that's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm all in on this one. Yeah. Um, and they even show some of that in the trailer. You know, you see him speak Spanish, and you see him uh, just become a, a bunch of other characters just in that one scene. So I'm just like, oh, wow, this is going to be good. So you're obviously going to have the characters that we saw in the first uh, movie split. Uh, I think all those characters he portrayed are going to be coming back. And then he's got some new characters that are going to come out, and you're going to see uh, all the different split personalities he has. So I think after watching Split 2, I was very interested in the whole uh, split personality stuff and, and how, how it happens and stuff and what your mindset's like. So I started researching it and stuff, and it's – it's some trippy stuff, man. It's 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 really trippy, you know. Yeah, no, definitely. It's the the concept is is out there. Yeah, I've 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 uh, watched uh, people that say they have it, but they could have honestly just been doing it for camera. But I don't know. Maybe some people actually do have it, and that's just them how they act. So, um, I'm curious to ever meet one of those people who have split personalities. It'd be pretty uh, pretty interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and Universal also brought uh, Jamie Lee Curtis up on stage, and they showed some Halloween footage. Um, I didn't read exactly what they showed, but I did read uh, how Michael Myers is very brutal and very – they're going back to the roots in this one. So I'm very excited for this movie after hearing that. Um, man, that trailer just got me, dude. I, I literally – that when that trailer came out that day, I, I'm not going to lie, I probably watched it at least 20 times. And when I watched, yeah, I watched that trailer a ton of times too. You, uh, I'm sure you know by now, Halloween is my favorite. Yeah. And when uh, when we did the podcast the last time around, we talked about Halloween, um, and I brought up the the whole that they're not si they're not brother and sister, they're not siblings any longer. You made me question whether or not I actually read that right. <laughs> yeah. And then I was glad to have it confirmed in the trailer. 
Yeah, they, uh... Yeah, well, you know what? Because I had read... I think they may have changed that, like, when they finally finalized the script. Um, and I'm kind of glad they kind of cleared that up because uh, now it's like uh, Michael Myers is just insane and he's just killing people. So that's what I kind of like about that. Yeah, and the the whole way that they, they set up the trailer, where he is, like, it, it, it's like a checkered floor and, like, he ah, everything just got me. Everything seemed awesome. And then the, the, like, last clip when he's just putting the mask on, I was like, yeah. game on. Game on. Um, I, I will say, hands down, in that trailer, one of the most badass lines was, um, you know, I've waited 20 years, or I waited uh, uh, 40 years for him to escape, and he finally did it. And then uh, the police officer responds, well, why the hell did you do that? And then she responds, so I can kill him. So I'm just like, ooh, that gave me goosebumps when I heard that, man. Yeah. So but... I'm so looking forward to this, man. I hope... Uh, I heard rumor that we're supposed to, or not rumor, but I've been seeing a lot of construction updates, and it looks like we're probably going to get a Horrors of Blumhouse Part 2, and I will, I can see that being incorporated in it, being that they don't want to give too much away for it to have its own maze, um, for it to just have its own little couple scenes and stuff like that in Horrors of Blumhouse 2, that could work out for me. Not for me. It needs its own house. <laughs> I completely agree, but I just, I already know how Universal's going to work. Um, they've tried the whole... Uh, making mazes before the movie comes out and uh, you go into it opening night and you're just confused and then after you see the movie you're like oh that makes sense now why don't they just make a, a maze from uh, from part one so that it refreshes our memory before we go watch the movie yeah that'd be cool you walk through part one and then at the end it's all the the new stuff so it's like yeah there's like a sign at the end that says go see it, part two in theaters and it says the date yeah <laughs> I'm so looking forward to that, though. I'm probably going to go to a midnight showing for that. That's going to be fun. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, um, I, I, I want to get that mask, too, hands down. That mask looks so badass. Oh, I, I ordered it. Arsic had, like, put up a website that was uh, doing, like, the pre-orders. So I ordered it, and um, I, I forget when the hell I get it, but it should be coming sometime soon. Yeah. Uh, and that's going to be our next bit of news. Awkward Arsic has officially stopped doing HHN content. Yeah, man. I mean, I I don't want to say too much about it because I really don't know where he's coming from with with that announcement. But I I love the guy's content, so I'm kind of down on the fact that he's not going to be putting stuff out. But I just hope you know he's making a good decision for himself, and it'll be positive uh, outcome for him. That's all. Uh, he told me exactly why he stopped doing it. Uh, I'm probably not going to say it just because to respect his privacy. But I could tell you this, it's nothing bad. Uh, he didn't get in any, any trouble with them. It's just strictly for professionalism, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, uh, for all you guys wondering out there, no, it's nothing bad. He didn't get into like a lawsuit or anything with Universal or anything. It's just uh, strictly for his future, and that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, so, uh, but it, it was kind of sad hearing the news because he's one of the um, he was one of the top uh, HHN updaters, uh, and he goes to both events every year. So it was kind of sad to hear that news, but uh, it's for the better for him. So that's that's you know, that's all you know. All you need to know is that he didn't do it just to do it. If he if he had the opportunity, he would still be doing what he's doing. But he's doing it for the better for him. And so yeah, yeah, Good um, for him. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I just said good for him, man. Yeah, he's yeah, he's got a lot on his plate, man, and uh hope to see him at uh Midsummer Scream this Sunday. That should be fun. Yeah. So the Purge uh series is going to be coming out pretty soon. They released a trailer at Comic-Con. I have not seen it yet, but I did watch one uh trailer when I went to go see The Purge uh at the premiere. I had no idea I was at the premiere. I just I got a uh, email or I got a link from Crypt TV that they were doing the premiere, and so I got free tickets and I just went. Um, so at the end of I don't know if you've seen the first purge yet. Have you seen the first purge? Yep, I saw it. What'd you think? I thought it was pretty badass. Um, uh, I actually just recently rewatched all of them, and I had seen the first one. And never seen any of the rest of them just because I hated the first one that bad. But they do just get better from there. So for anybody who hasn't watched it, 
um, know that the first one is not an indicator of what's to come. And this last one was actually pretty cool. The the one gang member that was a complete badass. <laughs> yeah. He, he went to like the martial arts school of thugs in the street. Like that guy. <laughs> I, I enjoyed his character a lot. And I just thought the, the whole buildup of the story of how it became what it is today pissed me off. But pissed me off in, to the fact that they, they did so well in building that story on like how it was just a corrupt system that got them to where they are today. Yeah. Um, that. I would say, uh, it's, it's good storytelling because now you see how messed up the, the system is for the new founding fathers. And it gives you a little bit more insight of how they had to make this work and for this country and stuff like that. I thought it was interesting that it only took place in a small town in New York. Um, but other than that, man, it was – I I still have a problem with it though um, as far as it getting its own maze over here. I, uh, that's my only problem. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, trust me. I immediately felt bad for you guys. I feel like um, – I mean not to gloat or anything. I feel like everything's going so well as far as announcements in Orlando and we were getting them so consistent. And then I always look forward to hearing what you guys are getting as well. But you guys weren't getting any announcements. And finally, when you get an announcement, it was so lame. Um, and not because the movie was lame. It's just a lame announcement. It wasn't like anything exciting. I mean, The Purge has been around forever at Halloween Horror Nights. I love the scare zones in, in Universal and would love to see the scare zones return again. But the fact that that ate up one of your maze announcements, I thought was kind of a low blow. The fact that it's only going to be at Hollywood kind of scares me because that means we were supposed to get one thing and this was a last minute decision. Quite possibly. Yeah. Because the fact that you guys aren't getting it either um, tells me that, yeah, that was supposed to be an exclusive property to the event. Unless, I don't know if you guys are going to get another, maybe you guys are going to get another original concept maze um, that was supposed to be what the first purge is, you know? Yeah, um, or maybe the Universal Gods just love Orlando better. <laughs> pretty much. I mean, okay, I'm going to be honest. You kind of killed me when you said that you weren't as much looking forward to a Killer Clowns from Outer Space Scare Zone. I know. I'm sorry, man. I didn't do that to hurt our friendship. I, no, <laughs> when you said that, I was like, you know how how long I've been killing for that to come over here? And the minute you guys got that announced, I was like, I hate myself. I hate or I hate... I hate Orlando. That that just that that does it for me. <laughs> so, you know, I I, I wasn't. It, it's not something that blew me away as far as an announcement. But the fact that you love it so much and we're getting it makes me happy. <laughs> no, yeah, because that is honestly one of my all-time favorite horror movies like ever. Um, I, I don't know. I if you, it. Did you re did or, you watch it? I watched it for for my 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 first time. I mean, I've I've known of the movie. I knew that it was like a cult classic, and I've seen here and there like little clips of it, but I never watched it full through. And um, I, I get it. I get it for sure now. Yeah, I the soundtrack, or you know, the main theme song "Killer Clowns from Outer Space" by the Dickies is such an iconic song. The score is so iconic. Um, just the way they look, like for the time when that came out, yeah, that was scary. That movie is considered a B movie. But it's also a cult classic now because, you know, everybody everybody knows who those clowns are now, you know? And just the fact of a concept of killer clowns from outer space, aliens who come down dressed like clowns and kill people and that's it. Like, that's awesome to me, you know? And It, it was what I like to call horribly awesome. Like yeah. It, sh it shouldn't have worked, but somehow they made it work. So let me ask you this now. Now seeing that movie, what do you want to see in the scare zone? So, um, I'm, I, I would like if they can make the scare zone like semi enclosed so that we're walking through a tent. Their spaceship. I, yeah. You know how like they had like the, the, the spaceship that looks like a pop-up tent from uh, like a, a, a circus. Yeah. I would love if they could pull that off and obviously, I mean, Maybe not, but I, I think the most obvious location for them to put this at is in the Simpsons area in Orlando. Um, 
but that that's what I really want to see. I want to see like a I want to see myself immersed into like a pop up tent. So it, it almost ends up being like a semi maze. Yeah. Um, God, dude, I could tell you so much shit I want to see in that maze easily. Um, <laughs> we already know a lot of the things that we are going to be seeing. Yeah. Um, you're obviously a lot of there's a lot of infamous clowns that you see uh, towards the end of the movie. But you got, of course, the main ones throughout the movie that are just are awesome. I would love to see how they're going to do the makeup for this clown. So you definitely, because I know I'm not going to be able to go out there this year, definitely got to get some footage of that for me, dude, because I, I really want to see how they look um, and how they came out and stuff like that. That's a must. I want to see that. Um, another iconic scene I would love to see is when they're at the biker uh, in the alley and he goes, what are you going to do, knock my block off? And he hits the oh, guy. Yeah. Um, yeah, I would love to see that. Of at least, at least the clown running around in boxing gloves, just as a reference to that, that'd be funny enough for me. Um, the convenience store when the two clowns are just messing up everything—that that's funny to me. Um, I would like to see a lot of the uh, maybe uh, a couple of the clowns walking around with the balloon dogs and stuff like that. That'd be really cool. Um, you know, as you say that, one of the cool scenes that I, I could see being redone is a clown using his hands to do shadow puppets that are like outrageous yeah. that just don't make sense with your hands. <laughs> um, they have like a project, they can project, yeah, they can project something on the, on the, you know, on a wall and then, yeah, you can have the clown act like he's doing all the stuff and everything. That'd be really cool. Um, another thing I would like to see is the clowns walking around with like the ray guns and stuff like that, that turn them into cotton candy cocoons. That'd be really cool. Uh, but the one thing I want to see more than anything is the, uh, the, uh, the alpha killer clown, the big giant one. That would be hands down the best thing ever. If they had a pop-up tent, they could fit that in there somewhere. Yeah, like they could. You could just even see like every now and then that thing activates and like the clowns go around and worship it and stuff like that. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah, that would be cool. Um, but I, I'm just I'm ex I'm extremely jealous. You guys are getting killer clowns from outer space, and I was <sighs> I've been wanting that to come to the event for so long, man. Ever since I saw that movie, uh, and ever since I've been going into that since 2011, every year I've been praying that they bring that to the event. This year is the 30th anniversary too, and I was very much hoping that they would bring it to the event, just because for the 30th anniversary would have been so cool. Um, I don't know if we're gonna get it though. I have not everything construction-wise I've seen. Uh, it hasn't looked like we're getting it, but I haven't seen too much of Waterworld yet, so never say never, you know. Have they ever announced something for both of us that is gonna be the same but at separate times? I don't think so. No, whatever. If we get both of us, they'll usually announce it. Like Stranger Things, when they announced that, they said it was for both parks. That's why if you saw the uh, the Universal sign, it didn't say Hollywood or Orlando. It just said Universal Studios. Um, Even though that obviously shot at your location. Yeah, of course, because they could do that shit in Hollywood real quick. But most of that was CGI anyway, you know what I mean? I mean, they just kind of shot the outerior shit, and then they CGI'd most of it and stuff. But um, Trick or Treat 2 was... Uh, Usually at the end of the thing, they'll say it'll say both Universal Studios Hollywood and Orlando. Um, that that's gonna be pretty good. I'm I'm really excited for Trick or Treat. Yeah, Trick or Treat is is gonna be awesome. Um, Sam Hain is is my man. I'm gonna dab him up when I see him. Um, <laughs> the <laughs> and I know you guys have been praying for this at least from from a lot of the the like media members that do Halloween Horror Nights. I know a lot of people were kind of like pissed that it didn't come last year and we got it. And to tell you just to rub it in your face because you didn't get it, that was an amazing, amazing scare zone. Yeah, that's what they, that's what, that's what, uh, that's what I've heard Aquavar, Aquavar, Aquavar 6 say and stuff like that. And uh, I think it that was cool that you guys got it as a scare zone. I'm glad that uh, we're getting it as a maze. Um, I thought it worked out really good as a scare zone. Um, I just think it works out even better as a maze, though. So I'm glad that um, I, 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 I've heard people say that it's kind of disappointing for you guys because you guys probably should have gotten it as a maze first and a scare zone. But now you had to do it back to back uh, this year. Maybe they'll incorporate some more stuff this year in the maze that you didn't get to see in the scare zone. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm okay with it. Uh, it. It was it was kind of like a... It, it's kind of their style now. So we got Stranger Things 1, and everybody is basically kind of set on the fact that we're getting Stranger Things 2 next year. So, like, as long as it does well. Um, yeah. And that's the same thing that happened with Trick or, Trick or Treat. 
they, they had the scare zone. It did well, and they're expanding on it. Um, I like the scare zone enough that this was a good announcement for me. It didn't blow me that, you know, oh, we're getting it two years in a row. Yeah, um, I'm kind of scared, though, because I don't know if we're going to be getting uh, American Horror Story this year. Um, I don't think I don't think there was an American Horror Story for us last year. I thought you guys got uh, you guys got three seasons last year, no? You guys got uh, if I stand corrected, you guys got two, three, and six. Oh yeah, yep. Uh, I, wait, hold on, did we? Yeah, because I, I, I was so jealous <laughs> that you guys got three seasons and we only got fucking uh, what was it? <sighs> Roanoke Nightmare, which I didn't like that season one bit. I'm trying to remember the maze, but um, I, I've only watched so much of American Horror Story that I, I think I do remember it now that I'm thinking about it. I, I remember it for sure. Oh, man. I know we had Saw. We had The Shining. I can't remember. Did we have American Horror Story? Maybe. See, now I look like a scrub not knowing <laughs> my stuff, man. <laughs> but uh, I don't know. I mean, from what I've been seeing... Uh, the usual spot for the last two years, they've had American Horror Story. That's looking like it's going to be uh, another Horse of Blumhouse because it's got the same um, facade as the last year's Horse of Blumhouse did. Um, so, uh, not a lot of people over here like the Horse of Blumhouse. I didn't have a problem with it um, at all. I thought it was a very well put together maze. Um, but I'm curious to see as to what they're going to do this year with movies. Um, I, I loved the the Blumhouse house last year. Um, I, I don't know how it compared to the one at, in Hollywood because I know you guys had different different properties inside. You guys had a uh, Happy Death Day, right? I think Happy Death Day, uh, The Purge, and Sinister. Yeah, I, I know that we had Sinister. Um, I can't remember. I can't remember everything that we had. To be honest, I think but, yours was uh, Insidious, Sinister, and The Purge. Quite possibly, I think you're right, but I know that the so to me, I've always loved the Blumhouse, um, the little uh, pre-movie uh, little clip to promote Blumhouse, and the facade for us was that pre-movie clip with like the chair going upside down and the light bulb hanging, kind of flickering and everything. That's badass. Uh, was was yours like that? No. So what? ours ours started with uh, since. You guys, your guys' purge was inside your maze. Our purge, we have a thing in Hollywood called the uh, Parisian Courtyard. So it's like a big, massive courtyard. Uh, once you walk in the main entrance, when you go down a little bit, you see it. Uh, in that courtyard, it was the purge. It was an outdoor kind of thing, and it was all the purge. So, like, our concept was the purge is going on outside, but for purge night, we're going to have a Blumhouse marathon. So you walk through all the purge stuff, and then you go inside the theater, and you live these movies. So then you, when you walked inside, you, the first movie you went through was Happy Death Day. You, you lived through that. But since, I didn't get, since it wasn't out before uh, the, when I went to the event, I didn't really understand it. Um, and then you went through the two Sinister movies, and then that was it. So ours was kind of like a cool concept where while the Purge is going on outside, we're having a Blumhouse marathon inside the movie theater on Purge night. So it was pretty cool. Interesting. That's a cool idea. Yeah, the... If you, if you haven't seen it, definitely pull, pull up the pictures of the facade in Orlando. The facade in Orlando was was amazing. Um, and if it, I'm sure you know the, the Blumhouse intros, how, how they look with the chair going upside down and like it being like a paranormal room kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, before every movie. That was the entrance for us, which to me just set the tone. I, I love that house. I, aside from um, uh, what was that that was my second favorite. Then, um, that Walkers, which was an original concept. Um, but that that one. Was, oh, and of of course, The Shining. The Shining was amazing. The blood, the elevator scene was crazy. Wow, that is pretty cool. It's like a mural of uh, of the opening sequence. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and the the light bulb is actually like hanging and moving side to side and everything. So like, it looks like it's moving like it would be in the little pre. The uh, intro thing for Blumhouse. That's really awesome. Yeah, I, I really like that. Um, yeah, it looks cool. Uh, I wish. Uh, well, I, you know what? Our facade wasn't too bad, but oh, that's a pretty cool facade. I like the way that looks and stuff. And um, 
So we're supposed to be getting. I think we're supposed to be rumored to get a part two. Another big rumor we're supposed to be getting, and it looks more and more as I see the construction updates for uh, uh, Hollywood, is um, Universal Classic Movie Monsters. Um, and the most recent uh, construction update that I've seen from TLEV, uh, the facade for the that maze where supposedly they think it's that maze is a black uh, kind of castle looking thing so that goes perfect with the uh, Universal Monsters I hope that's a pretty good one and I hope it comes true because I love the classic movie monsters Frankenstein you know Dracula you got uh, the mummy and all that so that should be pretty cool if that if that is a, a legit maze I'm, I'm all for that yeah I would I would love to see a maze that kind of takes the the Blumhouse uh, of horror concept and like it, you go through all those movies but with the classic um, monsters that would be awesome yeah I'm very much looking forward to it man because if it's uh, if it's true then I'm gonna enjoy that so uh, we got I guess we got through the HHN thoughts and speculation part pretty quick because uh, I love talking about HHN man yeah, uh, who doesn't man <laughs> yeah, it's, it's 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 right around the corner, man. It should it's two more months and it starts, and I'm getting very much excited. It's gonna be the first year I go multiple nights, so I'm really very much looking forward to that. If everything goes well, I think I told you this, but if everything goes goes to plan, I'm actually going opening night for the media event, and if, if I can, I'll be filming. Nice, nice. Yeah, I was gonna do media too, but I gotta work, so it's just like I can't go opening. We went opening night last year, and we had such a fun time. We met uh, so many celebrities last year at the uh, Hollywood event, and it was cool. So, not gonna be able to do that this year though. But I will be going opening weekend. I'll go that Saturday, so it should be fun. Um, so let's talk about the Venom footage. I don't know how much you are of a Venom fan. Um. I wouldn't say I'm a huge Venom fan, but I, I'm I'm loving the the trailer that was released. I didn't see any additional footage though. So I it didn't get released, but I've read uh, descriptions on it, and they kind of announced of who's going to be the villain for Venom and stuff like that, and if Spider Man's going to be in it or not. But uh, some of the major news that came out is uh, they did confirm that uh, the villain uh, is one of the guys that they show in the trailer, the scientist who's looking for the symbiote. Um, he is going to be uh, apparently the villain for that movie. And they did confirm that um, later on down the line, the director for the new Venom, uh, for the Venom movie said that they want to introduce Tom Holland's Spider-Man in uh, kind of like a crossover down the line, hopefully. So that's kind of some good, exciting news because um, a lot of people want, you know, you can't really have Venom without Spider-Man. That's Sp one of Spider-Man's main villains, you know what I mean? Yeah, and if they introduce him as a crossover, that would be awesome. Yeah, so that would be pretty cool. That opens up the line to, like, the multiverse and stuff like that. But one of the saddest things I did here is, unfortunately, Venom will not have the iconic white symbol, symbol, symbol on his chest in his movie, so that's kind of a disappointment in a way because that kind of really defines who Venom is, you know what I mean? No, I get you, but did they give a reason why? I don't think so. I think because maybe this is like his first time, so he probably doesn't even have a logo yet. You know, maybe he's just getting uh, adapted into the uh, symbiote, trying to figure out what it's what it can do and stuff like that. Maybe he'll come up with the logo later on. You know what I mean? Gotcha. Yeah, maybe the when they first meet Spider-Man, they they kind of reflect off of him. That's how they get it. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Um, they did confirm though that the symbiote uh, Riot's going to be in the movie. It's another. Kind of Venom, but I guess he, uh, since his name is right, he's a little bit more crazier than Venom. So I think he's going to be the main villain. Um, and they have not confirmed it, but it's been rumored that uh, Woody Harrelson is going to come on to play Carnage if they do make a sequel. And uh, that's supposed to be a post credit scene in this movie. Rumored. Not true yeah, yet, though. I've heard that. And um, from the bit of research that I've done, Carnage and uh, a lot of the other sim. Sim uh, I can never pronounce it right. Symbiote, symbiote, whatever. Um, are like his offspring. Yeah. Okay. Um, but it. I, I'm really looking forward to this Venom movie. It should be really good. I love the Spider Man and stuff like that. So that should be pretty good. Buffy the Vampire Slayer is getting a reboot from Joss Whedon himself, the guy who created the show. I don't. It is not confirmed if any of the original cast members are coming back, but it is getting a small screen reboot. 
and most likely Fox is going to be the one to screen it again because they're the ones who screened it originally. Uh, Fox originally came out and said, we are willing to do a reboot if uh, Joss Whedon is on board. And Joss Whedon is finally on board, so we are getting a Buffy the Vampire Slayer reboot. I'm hoping that Sarah Michelle Gellar comes back to reprise the role as Buffy. Such an amazing show when it was on. Um, and then they did the spinoff show, I think it was called Angel. Uh, and that was another good show, so I'm looking forward to that, man. I like Buffy. Yeah, I, I liked Buffy a lot, too. Uh, I, I don't need them to bring the original cast, but I did like Angel a lot. I liked his character and the, the spinoff. Um, I just need them to bring back the original score, and I'm okay with it. Yeah, that theme song <laughs> to that freaking show was amazing. You know that? Yeah. So. Um, American Horror Story Apocalypse is the official name for Season 8, which will be the Murder House and Coven crossover this season. Um, that was leaked a while back, and it wasn't confirmed yet, so it finally got confirmed at Comic-Con that the 8th season of American Horror Story will be called Apocalypse. And earlier on uh, this year, or a couple months ago, the creator came out and said, yes, this will be the season where Murder House and Coven finally cross over. So... That should be interesting. I'm very interested to see how they're going to cross this over, if we're going to get any returning characters from the show. Uh, personally, I have not seen the season Coven, so I'm going to have to go and watch that. Uh, the thing I like about American Horror Story, though, is you do not have to watch them in order. You can watch any season uh, that you feel like. Uh, so I do uh, I do enjoy that. So I can go and watch Coven. I don't have to watch two or anything. So that should be pretty fun. However, I did like Murder House because Murder House was obviously the – one of the best seasons of all time. So we'll see what happens in that crossover. Are you a fan of American Horror Story? Um, off and on. I haven't gone through like the whole entire, uh, like all the seasons. But there's been a few that I really liked. Um, I liked Asylum. Um, I, I liked a good portion of the one where they were going through like the cults. It was a cult, American cult. Horror Story. The last, yeah. uh, the last season, yeah, that was a good season. Yeah, I liked a good portion of it. I didn't like how it was go- getting towards the end, but um, yeah, I mean, it, oh, all in all, I, I like it. I wouldn't call myself like a huge fan though. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this season. Should be good. Um, like I said, there's a lot of characters I would love to see come back for both Murder House. I can't say Coven, but for Murder House for sure, there's a lot of characters I would love to see come back. And that's where Whatchamacallit's sister first appeared in American Horror Story for from the nun. Um, that's where I first saw her on American Horror Story. That's where I first what saw that actress. <laughs> what what'd you call it? I like that. Wait, I think I remember is it like Vera something? Vera uh, look oh. it up. Oh, drop my phone. Nice. Uh, I'll look it up on IMDB real quick cuz it yeah. is killing me as well. Um her name I, I, I'm assuming she's one of the main characters in The Nun, so I'm just going to look up The Nun. It is uh, Teisa Farmiga. Far, farm, farm go- Farmiga? Farmiga, yeah. Yeah, so her sister is Vera Farmiga. Yeah. Yep, okay. So that should be pretty good. Um, I want to see her character obviously return in Murder or in this season because I guess her and her family became... Uh, spirits of the house now so that should be pretty cool to see um and yeah i was gonna do a horror movie death this week but i kind of didn't really come up with anything um do you have one that comes off the top of your head um way to put me on the spot man <laughs> <laughs> i was gonna try to come up with something but i just we don't even have to do it if you don't want to um i mean i don't, I don't mind let's see Horror movie death. Hmm. <laughs> Repeat the the one from our original podcast, which is the the guy in in, in the pantry from the guy, Halloween. The, the guy in the <laughs> pantry. That was a good one. Um, you know what? I got one. Since we were talking about killer clowns from outer space, one of the best deaths in there. They don't show him killing them, but uh, you do see him be used as a puppet. Is the officer? Um. And that was just a cool scene, a cool scene overall when he used him as a puppet uh, for a vin- kind of ventriloquist uh, kind of little scene. And then he pulls his hand out and he's just dead. So that's going to be the horror movie death of the week. I'll put that on the screen right now so they can watch it. But yeah, that was the uh, horror movie death of the week. And uh, 
yeah, can't go wrong with little killer clowns. You know what I mean? No, you can't. Um, Evil Dead 2 is getting a 4K Blu-ray remaster. Very much looking forward to that, finally. Yeah, any any old school movies brought back in better quality, uh, it's always a plus for me. It's a plus, but then you see how shitty they actually look in HD, and you're just like, okay, might as well go back to standard definition. <laughs> no, but I, I love the Evil Dead trilogy, whether how cheesy they are or not. Uh, Bruce Campbell just sells them every time, and I love Bruce Campbell, so... You already got me sold. I'll probably buy the 4K remaster. I think it's the only one out of all. Oh, actually, actually no, I don't got Evil Dead one or two, so I'll pick those up pretty soon. Then I'll probably get that 4K remaster for Evil Dead two. I got Army of Darkness though. Army of Darkness is hilarious. So, uh, Predator. I don't know if you saw the trailer for that. That looks pretty good. I, I've only seen the the original. They they released a, another one in Comic Con. Uh, just no, this is the one, but they showed a new image of the new Alpha Predator. Yes, uh, I saw that. That looks... That Alpha Predator looks badass. Um, they showed... In one of the, the latest trailers, they showed him pull a Predator out of the wall like it's nothing. Like the wall is like a piece of fucking cardboard. And it's just like, what the hell is going to happen in this movie, man? I'm very much looking forward to this. Yeah, the the, the movie is shaping out to be a good one. Um, and I, I, I like the cast. I'm really interested to see um, what, what's his name Keegan Keegan uh, Michael yeah. Keegan Michael Key yeah I'm I'm really interested in seeing how how he does given the success of his partner in in directing I want to see how he acts in a horror movie well he was on Conan O'Brien I'm a huge Conan O'Brien fan so I, I, I you know this week uh, was awesome especially because he did a a week of shows in Comic Con but he had the entire cast and the director Shane Black on um his show on the first night Wednesday and Key was always like I'm a huge uh, Predator fan like he, he he's like a diehard fan but he goes I've always wanted to act in drama movies action movies and when I got the role for this this was like an ultimate thing and stuff like that and he goes I just kind of wanted to space myself out from comedy he goes of course I'm always going to love comedy but uh, it's always been my dream to star in like an action movie so this was pretty fun so I was like oh wow Good for that guy, then. He finally got the role he always wanted, so that's pretty cool. Um, I'm very much looking forward to him, though. This guy, this guy's a really good cast. Uh, Tom Jane's in it, the guy who played the original Punisher. Olivia Munn's in it. She's, like, beautiful, and so that that's enough said for her, you know what I mean? Yeah, don't talk about my wife like that, man. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, she is something else, man. But, uh, yeah, she's in it. She, I think she's supposed to be portraying, like, a scientist of some sort, so that's pretty cool. Uh... But I think what kills it every time, uh, just seeing the Predator on screen, I just that already sells it for me enough, man. As long as I get to see a Predator kill some people, I'm good. Um, another thing that was interesting to me, and Shane Black brought this up in the, uh, in the interview they had on Conan, I think this is actually the first solo Predator movie that's actually going to be rated R. Yeah, yeah, he, he brought that up. Uh, I actually, I'm a huge Conan fan as well. Um, yeah. That was that was an interesting little fact. I I it was a minor detail that had gone over my head completely. Yeah, and I, I'm just like, wow, as 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 violent and brutal as those movies are, they were not rated R. I was like, damn, this is gonna be the first one where they actually get to get away and get more creative with the kills. I'm all for that, man. So that should be pretty fun to play with. Then I'm pretty cool. I'm pretty excited to see that, and can't wait to see that. Uh, War of the Worlds. Uh, you know that movie Stephen King did a while back, the remake with Tom Cruise. That is giving uh, War of the Worlds in general is just getting a TV adaptation, so that should be pretty fun. Nice. Um, yes, uh, I heard about it, but I haven't looked too much into it. But I am a huge fan of the original movie. Um, the, the, just the whole idea of how how that story came to be and become a, a movie adaptation was hilarious. It, if I remember correctly, it was a, a radio host saying a story that people thought was real. Yeah. So, radio host was reading uh, parts of the book on the thing. People were freaking out, calling in and thinking it was real. The military actually came down to the studio and says, you need to stop this shit right now. You're scaring millions of people. They think this is real. And it almost led to him getting arrested and stuff like that. So, that's a, that's a fun little uh, backstory to War of the Worlds um, as far as, it, it, of course, originally a book. Then it got, a, I think, a 1950s or 1960s uh, movie adaptation. Then Steven Spielberg in 2005 remade it with Tom Cruise. 
uh, one of the most iconic scenes that is still on the back lot to this day at Universal Studios in Hollywood is the 747 plane crash scene. Um, and of course, if you ever get to go to the Hollywood event, you get to walk through that set um, on the Terror Tram. One thing I look forward to every year is going to the back lot and walking through the the Grinch set, of course, the infamous Norman Bates Hotel, and the 747 set. It's just a dream come true because I, oh my god, it's it's I it's just it's really you gotta like walk through it yourself to just get that feeling. But I love it, man. Maybe next year uh, for Halloween Horror Nights, I'll come and I'll walk through it for my first time. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, I'm planning on doing the same thing next year because my dad wants to go to, uh, wants to do, uh, you know, all the things out there, Walt Disney World, Universal, and I was like, let's plan it for maybe October. That way we have, we're gonna uh, get a travel agency. We put payments down and stuff and pay for our whole trip. I was like, I want to do it in October though because I want to go see Horror Nights in uh, Orlando. Check that out. So. If we if that does go through, I will let you know and we can do a meetup. Yeah, definitely, man. Let me know. For sure. Um, and the last thing we're going to talk about, uh, we're going to end it on a – I mean, this whole podcast, the whole coming back, is it's been a good note. Uh, Eddie Tamman's always been an awesome guest. Um, and you're actually, I think, other than SoCal Exploring, you're the only person who's uh, been on the podcast multiple times. So congratulations. Oh, nice, man. Hopefully more than just twice. Oh, and yeah. Be- We're going to get you on a bunch of times, man. Like I always say with all my guests, you're more than welcome to come back anytime. Be- before we get to like ending notes, can, can I add one one little thing that I ran into while watching uh, some trailers? Yeah, go for it, man. Have you watched the trailer for Hellfest? Yes. Okay. My God, did that movie look amazing. Exactly. I completely stumbled upon it. Um Lionsgate film. It made me just think of Halloween Horror Nights and this potentially happening there. <laughs> I was I was watching it with my girlfriend and she said this is actually one of her biggest fears every single time that she goes to a haunted house. Now, if you really want to see a good movie that uh, kind of touches on that situation, um, watch the movies The House is October Built. Oh, yeah. Come on, man. So, Come on. I that saw movie them, was awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I saw them on Hulu, right? And I've always seen them advertised on Instagram, and I'm just like, oh, whatever. It's probably another B movie. I finally sat down and watched them on Hulu. I watched the first one. I was so hooked on it. I was like, I got to watch the second one immediately. I watched the second one, and my God, it's such a twist story, but it's so good, man. Yeah. One, so I watched the first one before the second one came out and couldn't wait for them to release the second one. They, they took a little bit of time. I think the second one was released like a year or two ago. Uh, but I watched the first one way back, and damn, that that movie was great. But this this looks like a great concept. The, yeah, the Hellfest. Yeah, it's like an urban legend that people think is an urban legend, but seems to be coming coming true. And the fact that it has to do with like an, a, a horror amusement park that comes once a year just completely caught my attention. Yeah. See, I don't ever trip out about that, though, no, because they when they cast these people, they do background checks on them and shit like that. So I never even trip out on that. But just the concept, dude, it's just like it makes you think like, well, what if they don't, though, you know? I mean, it's it's a it's an idea that's always like in the back of my head because I do some local haunts here in uh, in like the D.C. metro area. And there's a couple of local haunts that are actually walks through like woods, which something like that is more like I mean. It's still unlikely because I'm sure they have security guards, but it's more likely to happen because somebody can sneak on, on if they're, like, hidden through a trail and are able to walk into that wooded path. Yeah, so that that's what always that's what always scares me about those, like, uh, uh, haunts, too. But at the same time, I'm just like, eh, screw it. Yeah, right? If, I've watched, if it's my, my time. <laughs> I've watched enough horror movies. I think I know. I'll, I'll, I, I, can, I think I can survive. <laughs> right? Um, uh, don't break the rules. Since we're on the topic of that, then, I want to bring up another movie that uh, it's kind of similar to that. Uh, and it's a movie by a company that I like a lot called Rooster Teeth. Um, they're making a, a horror movie called Bloodfest. Now, um, I heard about this I, I heard about this one way before Hellfest. Hellfest trailer came out, I think, like just like a week or two ago. This Bloodfest trailer first came out, like I think, a couple months ago. Um it's almost exactly the same concept, except that uh, with Vare's 
Um, they have like zombies and stuff like that, and then it looks really cool. If you get a chance, look it up. It's uh, the movie's called Bloodfest, uh, Rooster Teeth Productions, and um, man, I can't wait to see this movie. Uh, it's supposed to be coming out in cinemas August fourteenth, which is literally the day after my birthday, so that's awesome. Okay, yeah, I'm looking at the images now. I think Hellfest actually comes out uh, September. Oh, nice. So there you go, month after month. So that's going to be pretty cool. Um, yeah. But uh, I'm glad you brought that up. I didn't think you. Uh, I didn't think a lot of people would watch that trailer because it looked like it was going to be a kind of a B movie, but at the same time, it looked really good. So I'm kind of glad I watched it. I'm glad you watched it. Glad you actually brought it up. So. Yeah, it comes out the 28th of September, so it's a, a good, cool movie to kind of get you in the, the mood to start off the Halloween haunt season. Yeah, it's going to be it's, it's perfect timing, too, because I think Halloween Horror Nights starts, like, the week before, so, like, you can go Halloween Horror Nights and watch that movie and then go again and stuff like that, so. Yep. Last thing we're going to talk about, um, one of my favorite uh, composers, and I think you'll agree with me on this one, has done so many iconic scores from Halloween to escape from L.A., to escape to New York, to The Thing. John Carpenter is taking his musical act on tour in October. Couldn't be more excited for that. I might actually have to get tickets to go see John Carpenter in concert. I know. Yeah, that that sounds awesome. And um, I've always wanted to, to meet John Carpenter. He was at an event here recently, um, and I wasn't able to go. Good thing I didn't go because I heard the event was a, a complete shit show and the organizers did a horrible job. But... Um, Back to the original point. Yeah, I, I may have to go see this as well. It sounds real interesting. Yeah, I, I, I think he did. His score for Halloween is so iconic, and I just think it's, it's really cool and stuff like that. And You know, he, he's made such iconic films over the years that you don't realize when you go back and take a look, you're like, oh, fuck, he made that? Man, no wonder why that movie's good. And uh, his score is always just... When he does scoring too, it's 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 awesome. You can tell how talented this guy is because not only can he score a movie, but he can also film make, write. This guy is just a super talented guy, and I'm so glad that he's involved with the new Halloween movie as well. Because, man, I have faith in Blumhouse, but when they when I heard they got the approval from uh, John Carpenter and he really liked the story for this, I was like, all right, I know this is gonna be a good Halloween movie then. And he's also doing the score for this one too, isn't he? Yeah, he's actually. I think in, like, June or uh, uh, May, he got in the studio and started scoring for it. So, should be pretty good. Yeah, no, a lot of people immediately kind of forget that a director can have multiple hats. And the fact that he is one of those directors that actually takes several other projects into his own hands, like doing the score for the movie, that's awesome. Yeah, so... Look out for that in October because it starts in October. Maybe he'll come to a city near you. Um, I'm hoping he comes in the Los Angeles area. There's so many venues he can hit. Um, and, yeah, I will be trying to get tickets to go to that. So that should be fun. That is, unfortunately, the end of the podcast. Um, I had such a good time coming back to the Mindless Horror, talking horror news and stuff like that. I'd like to give a special thank you to my guest, Eddie Tainment, uh, for being on the show today. Uh, I am so glad that uh, for a comeback podcast, I got an amazing guest. And uh, if you guys want to see more of Eddie Tamant, make sure to hit that uh, subscribe button on his channel because uh, he's coming in with that content. And, you know, Horror Night season is just around the corner. So, you know, all of us guys are going to be getting together and making all this content and stuff like that, collaborating possibly on uh, maybe thoughts on more properties and stuff like that. That'd be pretty cool to do. I think I, I think I talked to you about that. Maybe we should collab on a – if we get the same property, maybe we should collab on a video just talking about that. That would be pretty fun. Definitely, or just weighing the, the differences between our events. That would be cool too. Yeah, I want to do a video like that of uh, what the pros and cons of both of our events that we have and stuff like that. So that would be cool to see. Here two different opinions on different sides of the coast and stuff like that. You got West Coast versus East Coast uh, and stuff like that. So that should be pretty fun. So – be on a lookout because we're going to be coming in with those videos pretty hot pretty soon. So thank you guys for listening to the Mindless Horror Podcast. Like I said, I will be at Midsummer Scream July 29th. Uh, so if you guys see me there uh, and George, I'll be wearing my Mindless Horror Podcast t-shirt. It's like there's only two of those made in the world. So um, yeah, and I'm a pretty tall kid, so you'll probably recognize me. Anyway, guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Eddie Tamman, again for being on the podcast. Like I said, you're welcome back 
anytime. Uh, just hit me up. Or I'll even hit you up, too, just to come back. Uh, I for sure want to do one uh, just probably specifically Horror Nights before Horror Nights starts. So if you're interested in that, let me know, man. Definitely, man. I'm, I, I appreciate you inviting me on. Always have a good time. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll do something soon again. Like I said, guys, be on the lookout. Make sure to subscribe to both channels, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.